SpaceX this week began deploying the second generation Starlink constellation with the debut of the V2 mini satellite. Let's go up, we'll get out the details. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you an update on SpaceX and Starlink. Now, Starlink is, as everyone probably knows, a SpaceX's massive uh, global constellation of uh, low Earth orbit satellites that have been bringing broadband internet to well, pretty much everyone everywhere now because they do have global coverage. But, well, Starlink is already very congested in a lot of places. And to fight this congestion, Starlink has always been planning a second generation constellation. And, well, despite not still not being nearly finished building out their first generation constellation, they this week have started launching the first of the second generation Starlink constellation with the debut of the new, what they're calling the V2 Mini Starlink satellite. Now, what's new about this satellite is, well, in particular, it has 4x the capacity. So it can handle 4x the amount of data through the satellite, up to the satellite, and down to the ground, or relayed out to other satellites in space via lasers than the original generation of Starlink satellites. And it is also using a new band, E-band, a new set of spectrum, to communicate to its ground stations, so it's freeing up more spectrum and more capacity to serve actual customers. So the Prior generation Starlink satellites had to use um, KU and KA band both for uplinks and downlinks. The new E band opens up more capacity at the ground station level as well. So this is a really nice evolution of Starlink and um, is going to help address the concerns of, well, running out of capacity. But, well, is it smaller? Why are they calling it the V2 Mini? What's going on with that? Well, actually, no. This is actually a much, much larger satellite than the first generation Starlinks. The, the current 1.5 generation Starlinks, the V2s are uh, three times heavier and four times as much surface area because they have a whole lot more solar panels on them. So they're much, much bigger satellites. And because of this, they can only fit um, 23 of them in a, dra in a Falcon launch vehicle to launch at a time, as opposed to the older Starlinks, they could launch 54 all the way up to 60 is what the record they've launched in the past at a time. So it means they're launching a lot fewer satellites. It's going to take a lot longer to deploy this next generation constellation with this V2 mini satellite. Well, if that's the mini, if mini is that much bigger, what is the full size V2? And that's the V2 that is planned to go and launch in SpaceX's upcoming Starship and Super Heavy launch system. So the new rocket that is you know, sitting on the pad in Texas that can be fully reusable, it's bigger than a Saturn V, it's going to be the most powerful rocket ever launched, um, but it's not ready yet. So you know, way back in uh, 2021, Elon Musk said that you know, Star Starlink was not going to be a viable business unless they can get to the V2 constellation and the capacity it provides and get to a pace of launching two starships a week to start deploying those by the end of 2022. That didn't happen. Starship has yet to do its maiden orbital flight. It is still deep in development mode, but SpaceX came up with a backup plan and that is the V2 Mini. So while they're waiting for Starship and the, which is the only rocket big enough to launch the full size V2 satellites, the V2 Mini lets them start working on the second generation constellation now with the Dragon and the Fal with the Falcon instead of um, waiting for Starship. So helps them start to build this now, but to really be viable, they need the v full size V2 and um, the, the Starship to come online to start launching these much, much more rapidly. Now, what else is going to be different about the V2 and the V2 Mini? Um, well, SpaceX hasn't been too clear, but the, presumably the, the full-size V2 will have a lot more solar power, a lot more throughput capacity to deal with congestion and data and serving customers on the ground. And it's also presumed that the full-size V2 is going to have the ride-along payload from T-Mobile that will be basically be a cell tower in space and allow cellular, direct-to-cellular connectivity um, from a normal cell phone to Starlink. Not at Starlink speeds. This will be low messaging. We have a little bit of photo messaging and stuff, um, but direct to your cell phone that is partnership with T-Mobile. That requires a completely separate system that'll be an extra payload, presumably that will ride along on the full size V2, not the V2 minis. So this is pretty exciting. Is 
SpaceX is still continuing. They're actually just tomorrow launching another of the first generation Starlink launches to continue finishing the first generation constellation. They still got a long way to go with that. But this way, starting with the V2 mini deployments, they'll starting with the beginning of generation two, they can start building out the um, the first shell of that constellation so that they will eventually be able to have global coverage for their second generation. They have FCC permission for 7,500 satellites, and there's well over 3,000 that are required for the first shell to be fully complete. So this is going to be a long process. I imagine the first batch of V2 minis are mostly just prototypes to test everything, but it's pretty exciting to see SpaceX continuing to evolve their network. Now, we'll have another news story up very shortly because uh, SpaceX has not got just the V2 Mini to announce this week. Also leaked via FCC filings, they have a new version, a mini version of Dishy that is a bit smaller, probably cheaper to manufacture, and that will also be coming out probably sometime later this year. Um, again, that's not officially announced, that is just an FCC filings, but it's basically being called the Dishy Mini as well, about the size of a laptop. Stay tuned for our ongoing coverage at the Mobile Internet Resource Center, where we will be covering all the interesting new developments when it comes to SpaceX and Starlink. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.